Hey Panthers, happy Wacky Tacky Day. This is Mr. Gerald reading to you one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books. And as you can see, it's behind me and it is called Thidwig the Big Hearted Moose. And I have it right here for you, so I'm going to get started. It's about being kind, but also not being somebody's doormat. Thidwig the Big Hearted Moose. Up at Lake Winnebango, the far northern shore, lived a huge herd of moose, about 60 or more, and they all go around in a big happy bunch, looking for nice, tender moose moss to munch. Up at Lake Winnebango, one day they were lunching, just strolling along, enjoying their munching, for the moose moss that day was especially fine. When it happened that Fidwick, the last moose in, moose in line, saw a bingle bug sitting, the bug called out, Hey, it's such a long road, and it's such a hot day. Would you mind if I rode on your horns for a way? Of course not, smiled Fidwick, the big-hearted moose. I'm happy my antlers can be of some use. There's room to spare. I'm happy to share. Be my guest and hop, and I hope that you're comfortable there. So the bingle bug picked out a nice easy seat and the moose went on looking for moose moss to eat. Well, an hour or so later, the bug heard a squeak and he heard a small voice of a tree spider speak. I say, said the spider, you've got a fine place. That moose seems quite friendly. He has such a nice face. If I got on too, do you think he would mind? Hop aboard, laughed the bug, and I think that you'll find that the moose won't object. He's the big-hearted kind. I accept, said the spider, with joy and delight, and he started a web on the horn to the right. So that's him starting his horn, his web. Did they ask the moose? No, they didn't. While the spider was spinning, he heard a nice song, and a fresh little zinazoo bird came along. He stopped and he stared and he chirped, Well, 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 what a smart place to build. What a great place to dwell. I've been living on trees ever since I was born. But here's something new. Why not live on a horn? If there's room for two, then there's room for three. There's plenty of room, laughed the bug, and it's free. Well, Thidwick stopped walking. What was all of that talking? These guests had caught Thidwick the moose unawares. Hey, called out poor Thidwick. What goes on there upstairs? So he's kind of worried. He don't know what's going on on his horns. Just building a nest, sir, the Zinazu said. And he began yanking the hairs out of poor Thidwig's head. And he plucked out exactly 204. Don't worry, laughed the bird. You can always grow more. Then he dozed off to sleep in his fine moose hair nest. This bird, said Thidwig, is sort of a pest. But I'm a good sport, so I'll just let him rest because... A host of a, above all must be a nice to his guest. So he's trying to be nice to this mean little bird who's plucked out all of his hair and made a nice nest for it. You can see it right there. It's kind of sad. But he's like, I'm going to do the nice thing, take the high road, and let him stay. He's a good moose. Besides, now it's getting quite late in the day, and surely tomorrow they'll all go away. But alas, the next morning, the sun's early light brought to Thidwig's eyes a most very unwelcome sight. Meet my wife, said the bird. I was married last night. And perhaps, by the way, I should mention to you that her uncle is coming to live with us too. You're a fine host, so I know you'd be willing. Then the uncle, who was a woodpecker, started drilling. All Thidwig's friends shouted, Get rid of those pests! I would! I can't! cried poor Thidwig. They're guests! Guests indeed! his friends answered. 
and all of them frowned. You can't stay with us because you're just not our sort. And they all turned their backs and they walked off with a snort. So there's poor Thidwig and there's his friends trying to leave. Now the big friendless moose walked alone and forlorn with four great big woodpecker holes in his horn. What holes? whispered Herman, a squirrel who spied them. What holes to hide nuts in? Hmm. Mind if I try them? They're yours, cried the woodpecker. Get right inside them. This big-hearted moose runs a public hotel. Bring your food, bring your wife, bring your children as well. So the whole squirrel family all jumped on pell-mell. So that means they all jumped onto his horns. There's a lot of things on his horns. And the very next thing that poor animal knew, but a bobcat and a turtle were living there too. Now, what was this big-hearted moose going to do? Well, what would you do if it happened to you? Now, there's a good question. What would you do if you were Thidwick in this moment? Would you ask them to leave? Would you just keep letting them stay on your horns? Think about it. Use your noggin. This is what poor Thidwig thought. You couldn't say scat, because that wouldn't be right. You couldn't shout scram, because that isn't polite. A host has to put up with all kinds of pests, for a host above all must be nice to his guest. So you try hard to smile, and you try to look sweet, and you'd go right on looking for moose moss to eat. But now it was winter, and that wasn't easy because moose moss gets scarce when the weather gets freezy. That means there's not a lot of moose moss to eat. The food was soon gone on the cold northern shore of Lake Winnebago. There just was no more. And all Thidwick's friends swam away in a bunch to the south side of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. He watched the herd leaving, and then Thidwick knew He'd starve if he stayed here. He has to go too. So that's him looking, and there's his friends leaving. He stepped in the water, then, oh, what a fuss. Stop, screamed his guest. You can't do this to us. These horns are our home. You've got no right to take our homes to the far distant side of the lake. Be fair. Thidwig begged with a lump in his throat. We're fair, said the bug. We'll decide this by a vote. All those in favor of going say aye. All those in favor of staying say nay. Aye, shouted Thidwig. But when he was done, nay, they all yelled. He lost 11 to 1. We win, screamed the guests by a very large score. And poor starving Thidwick climbed back on the shore. Then do you know what those dirty old pests did? They asked in some more. Who do you think is going to jump on now? They asked in a fox who jumped in from the trees. They asked in some mice and they asked in some fleas. They asked in a big bear, and then, if you please, came a swarm of 362 bees. Poor Thidwig sank down with a groan to his knees, but then came something that made his heart freeze. So look at all the animals on poor Thidwig's horns. Bullets came zinging right past Thidwick's face. Guns were bang-binging all over the place. Get that moose! Get that moose! Thidwick heard a voice call. Fire again and again and shoot straight one and all. We must get his head for the Harvard Club wall. So all these hunters have spied poor little Thidwick down here. They want to get his head and put it up on the wall of their club. Kind of sad. Thidwick took off running 
to his heels with that load on his head with 500 pounds on his horns, the moose fled. He could have run faster without all those pests, but a host above all must be nice to his guest. Up canyon, off cliff, over wild rocky trail, with bullets bang bouncing around him like hail, up gully through gulch and down slippery sluice with his hard-hearted guests race the soft-hearted moose. So that's them all shooting at him and he's running. Poor little guy up there. How do you think he feels? Probably scared out of his mind. Then finally they had him. Because of those pests, he had run out of luck. Because of those guests on his horns, he was stuck. He gasped. <gasps> he felt faint. <sighs> and the whole world grew fuzzy. Thidwick was finished completely. Or was he? Look at that picture. They've got him surrounded. They've got him cornered. He's over here. He's got no place to go. They're all standing here, ready to get him. Finished? <laughs> not Fidwig. Decidedly not. It's true he was in a most terrible spot, but now he remembered a thing he forgot. A wonderful something that happens each year to the horns of all moose and the horns of all deer. Today was the day Fidwick happened to know. So he's smiling right here. What do you think's gonna happen to the old horns of a deer and moose? What happens every year? Do you know? The old horns come off so that new horns can grow. And he called to those pests on his horns as he threw them. You wanted my horns, now you're quite welcome to them. Keep them, they're yours. As for me, I shall take myself to the far distant side of the lake. So look at them, their horns are breaking off, the animals are nervous. And look at the hunters, they're like, what? And he swam Winnebago and found his old bunch, and he arrived just in time for a wonderful lunch at the south side of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. There's Thidwick. So he's like, hey guys, what's up? His old horns today are, well, you know where they would be, and his guests are still on them, all still stuffed as they should be. So, look at this picture, the last picture. There's his horns on the wall of that club and all the animals are still on them. They got little X's on their eyes, which means they were stuffed. So they're there forever. And that is the end of Thigwick the Big Hearted Moose. I hope you enjoyed it.